now before. Okay, got it. All right, well, here we go. I'm gonna let everybody in. Hello. Hi, everybody. Hi. Welcome to the Student Open Mic Night here at 24 Pearl Street, which is a community event for all of you, featuring all of you, our wonderful students here at 24 Pearl Street. My name is Jennifer Jean. I am the program director of 24 Pearl Street, and uh, I'm super excited to have this event. I always love these community events because I get to hear from the students that I only hear from digitally. Um, and this way I can hear your voices and your work. Um, so yeah, welcome. And yeah, turn on your, your videos, show us your lovely faces or not. You don't have to, if you don't want to, that's okay too. Um, so I'm going to, uh, in a moment, introduce our lovely host for the evening. But beforehand, I just wanna say, um, the way things are gonna run is that uh, we have a, a sign up list uh, that went out earlier. You're all in a sort of random order. <laughs> And uh, Melissa will will handle that portion of it. Um, if you have any tech questions though, uh, or any questions about 24 Pearl Street or the summer program that's coming up, um, you can reach out to me through the chat and I'll answer through the chat or through email, whichever. You can also email me during, the, um, during this event. I'll be paying attention to my email, uh, especially if you get knocked off and you're trying to get back on, I'll help you deal with that. So definitely reach out to me about all those things. I also want to note to everyone that this event is being recorded and will be posted on the Fine Arts Work Center YouTube channel very soon for your viewing pleasure, for your sharing pleasure. We really hope that you share this and that you're proud of all the wonderful work that you do. So now join me in welcoming Melissa Studdard. I'm going to say a little bit about her. She's a cool person. I wanna say that right off the bat also. She is the author of the Poetry Collection's Dear Selection Committee and I Ate the Cosmos for Breakfast, as well as the chapbook, Like a Bird with a Thousand Wings. Her work has been featured by PBS, NPR, New York Times, The Guardian, and the Academy of American Poets in their Poem A Day series. As well, her work has appeared in Poetry Magazine, Kenyon Review, and New England Review. Her awards include the Lucille Medwick Memorial Award from the Poetry Society of America, the Penn Review Poetry Prize, the Tom Howard Prize from Winning Writers, the Real Poetry International Film Festival Audience Choice Award, and so much more. And as I said before, she's a cool person. So that's <laughs> that's something that you all should remember. Join me in welcoming Melissa Studdard. Thank you, Jennifer. That, I'm glad you got the most important point to mention that I'm a cool person <laughs> because that's not in my written bio. So <laughs> thank you. Uh, I just wanted to start by saying how absolutely thrilled I am to be hosting you all tonight. My time as um, teaching in uh, the Fine Arts Work Center has just been absolutely glorious for me. I've loved my students and I've been so incredibly impressed with everyone's work. And I'm just really excited to hear it tonight on this platform of sharing. And I think it's also wonderful to be able to hear what people in other workshops are doing and sort of cross-pollinate um, ideas and inspiration. So um, thank you, Stephanie and Jennifer, for having me do this. I'm super excited. So um, I did wanna say we don't have an overabundance of readers tonight. So we can have students possibly go twice if there's time at the end. So in the beginning, you'll read one poem or one page of prose. And then once we get through the list, possibly we'll be able to go back and start over again. And before you read, go ahead and tell us a little bit about yourself. 
And as well, if you want to say something about the workshop that you took and your instructor, that would be really nice for the other people here to um, hear about that and when they're making their decisions about future workshops. Uh, as well, please, 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 I know some of the students who have taken these workshops have gone on to win awards with their poems and um, publish poems that were written in workshop or um, publish books. So brag on yourself. Take a minute to tell us about that before you read your poem. So I am going to call on people one by one in the list that I have in the order. And um, our first reader is Cynthia Randolph. So Cynthia. Um, okay, I'm Cynthia Randolph. I'm in San Francisco. And I've taken a number of workshops through Pearl Street, um, and I just, I love them. I, they're, they've all been online, but then I did a group um, residency in the off season last year at the Fine Art Work Center, which was amazing with writers that I had met online and um, workshops, uh, primarily Sabrina Oramarks. So the poem I'm going to read is an acrostic poem that's um, responding to a painting by Magritte called Mysteries on the Horizon. It's called Every Day I Miss the Sunset, So I Turn Away from the Sky. Every day I miss the sunset, so I turn away from the sky. It is dusk, it is dawn, it is dusk. I turn my back on the world for a little while. I want to stay here, I cannot stay here. I keep my coat on. The night is tired of being beautiful. The moon hangs above my head like a hook as I try to walk away from where you are. I receive messages, but do not respond. I dress in black to disappear into the night, but the night sky is blue. The sky is not blue, says the scientist, who then says many words like light and color and scatter. Blue words hang in my mouth. I want to stay here. I cannot stay here. I keep my coat on. The stars turn their back on the world for a little while. Wow, <laughs> that was beautiful. Just absolutely gorgeous. And you really had me at the title. <laughs> I was just like, wow. Um, but I just, I love the imagery and the color and the tension and contradictions between what you um, can have and what you want. Just beautiful. Thank you. Um, so our next reader is Carol Dispo Fawcett. Uh, and Carol, I should know this, but did I say your middle name correctly? Oh, yeah. Yay. <laughs> You're one of 10 people in the whole world who've ever done that. <laughs> First I'm cool and now this. <laughs> Um, you are very cool. Melissa is very cool. This is my first class with this organization that I took from Melissa and it was amazing. And we had amazing poets in the class and I just learned so much. Um, and so the, and I live in the Pacific Northwest. I'm a grandma of two wonderful grand crazy grandsons. Um, and I love to write. So the poem I want to read tonight is one that I workshop. It's after Melissa stuttered, um, uh, because it was inspired by one of her poems in her recent book. The title is the same as the first line, or is the first line, and it's called Fine as Sandpaper on My Vagina. This is what I want to say when the man with the rudy nose asked me how I am on the anniversary of your death. The rebel in you would have hooted at that response, but being a good little Norwegian girl who was raised to never say what she thinks I just smile and think how fine I really am. I am shove this where the sun don't shine fine. I'm dying inside fine. Yellow canary choking on a vine fine. I'm husband and mother died a week apart fine. I'm fuck you February fine. Fuck you cancer fine. Fuck you Alzheimer's fine. I'm why did you leave me here sitting in my grief fine. Between the anniversaries of fucked and fine, I discover other kinds of fine. I learn, open my body to the light like a coramint fine, hummingbird buzzing like a bumblebee fine. I learn, oldest grandson buzz light earing me with a saber fine, and youngest grandson throwing his arms around my neck fine. 
I learn walking beside my grief fine. And most importantly, I learn it's not a race to the end of the line fine. Thank you. Wow. <laughs> you also have me at the title. <laughs> Amazing. Uh, I love the the sass and attitude in that. And it's just so, so vibrant in the way you've managed to combine the serious with the humorous. Just really, really masterful. Thank you for sharing that. So our next reader is Marianne McDonough. If I mispronounce anyone's name, please feel free to just throw virtual tomatoes at me and then correct you were, me. You were so close. It's McDonough, but it's it was it was good enough. So thanks for that. Um, so I, I think that this could possibly be the um, the the grief portion of of the evening as I as I follow Carol. And by the way, Carol, I love the cormorant line, an image. That was my favorite thing in in what was a, a poem filled with favorite things. So um, this is my first. Uh, workshop ever um, on any on any level any sort um, I took uh, my interior journey with Rebecca which was um, extraordinary I think I saw Jen um, floating around who was one of my uh, um, workshop compatriots and, and a, a, a definitely gentle reader who I learned a lot from um, but in the very beginning I was incredibly um, intimidated because I had never published anything. Um, I introduced myself uh, at the first day as a baby poet, um, but the, the process was really extraordinary. Um, I lost my husband a year ago next week and have been uh, working through, you know, and processing a ton of different feelings. And so in this workshop, I actually uh, created what I'm calling a six poem movement that is designed to sort of track the seasons of my grief, which are reflected in the seasons around me. So um, the, the, the broader piece is, um, is called The Frozen Edge of Spring. And this is an excerpt um, about six months into my grief journey and it's called The Calendar Slips. In those final weeks, we watched the evening skies play out, madras gold and blushing pink with every shade of blue and gray. Our hopes and dreams for the honeyed years seemed to finally be upon us. After a perilous road rife with highwaymen and other dangers, the ease we yearned for just up ahead, the surprising sweetness of these days when we allowed ourselves to dream. A dream of choosing us, placing our love high above the drudgery of family life and mercenary work. The two of us, burnished by the fires we walked through, sometimes lost to each other, but now again found. I shall capture these memories in a jar like the fireflies we chased as children and set them at my bedside to illuminate this lonely dark. The time to chase, shake my fists and scream at the fates who cut your string has passed. The way back to us is impassable now. So I carry you forward the way I carried our children. But oh, so much deeper. Your DNA weaves its strands around mine, some cellular transubstantiation occurring. I become you. I become us, forged together we are something new. And so my feet keep moving, keeping time to the melody of your song as the calendar slips ahead to early spring once more. Thank you, that was just incredibly emotionally resonant and I'm sorry to hear about your husband. And I know especially this time right now must be particularly difficult. Um, the what you said about the memories like fireflies was just an absolutely stunning, stunning metaphor. Um, I wanted to see if you could tell us a little bit more about, you said, a, did you say a six poem movement? Would you say a little more about that? I think you're muted. You're muted. I am and now I'm unmuted. Um, yeah, you know, I just sort of made that up, but that's how it occurred to me in my head. It was this idea of again, this movement that had a beginning and a middle and an end and a movement also like, um, like, a, you know, a piece of music, you know, mm. that it just had this sort of seamless flow from through time and space. And so much of what I've been experiencing feels that way. And mm. so this was a reflection of um, particular moments along that journey that I felt were sort of as, as, I don't know if progression is the right way, but certainly, you know, as I was carried down the stream of, of the experience of this grief. 
Oh, that's really, really lovely. Thank you for sharing. Thank you. Our next reader is Genevieve Arley. Hi, welcome, Genevieve. Hi, y'all. Sorry about the setup here. There is major demolition going on outside, so I fled to the closet for uh, the sound booth effect, but it, it I didn't actually have time to hang up a, a shirt, <laughs> uh, and hence the light is poor. Um, thanks, Marianne, for reading that. I'd read it in draft form and commented and saw and it's its really It's great to see your face, and thank you for all of your commentary. Sorry, Melissa, don't mean to co-op, but you know ours was a totally asynchronous virtual experience, so it's exciting to sort of see each other and hear each other's voices. Nice. Very nice. I think a, a synchronous component would have been great, but the asynchronous also has many advantages. Um, so I guess um, I was going to read, let's see, what were we supposed to say? We were supposed to acknowledge our workshop leader, Rebecca, who is an incredible reader of text, uh, can find connections like these tiny thread hair filament size connections and bring everything together. I cannot recommend her readership enough. It was pretty extraordinary to witness and so gentle. And um, I was all over the place in that workshop, but I did write this one poem that I'll share. Um, if there's any emotion I understand, it's, it's grief. And this is a kind of grief, but um, not quite the same. Um, I'm coming to you from Los Angeles. Uh, this is my parents' walk-in closet. <laughs> and um, I live here with them right now while I'm on medical leave. Okay. So um, this is called Flat Earth Theory. Day visions aside... What do I dream of, nights? You, in checkered fields I used to run among hills you never saw. You, at watercolors in the parlor of a house I'll never go back to. Us, beneath an arcade that doesn't exist in some European city shining with glass. You're making a scene, my walking away, into a neon cubist future without you. You're seeking everywhere but where I am. My believing you'd never give up, but the trail going cold, the line going dead, and I wake up sweating through cotton in winter as once you caressed me insensate, adoring my sleep against dawn rooftops we never saw again because you're right. We should have eloped handcuffed ourselves to that bed on the balcony where we wanted for nothing because in every other dream of us, I keep trying to leave. Thank you. And thank you also for the way you read that. It The, the poem itself felt so intimate, but your reading also just, I, I felt like you were just speaking directly to me, which is so wonderful. Uh, but I saw somebody put in the chat neo cubist future, which was a line I loved as well. Uh, and I want to encourage you all to keep writing comments in the chat like that. It's really nice to uh, for people to see what lines are resonating with you. So, um, our next reader is Moira, Moira Walsh. Is she here? She's not okay. I was thinking maybe I just wasn't seeing her. Elizabeth Thoreau. Also not okay. Stephanie Height. Hi, everyone. I'm Stephanie. Um, yeah, thank you so much. It's really a delight to be part of this uh, just web as we as we wait, weave all these different poems together um, this evening. So lovely to be in company. Uh, I was in uh, Sean Singer's revision class. And what I particularly enjoyed 
in that course was looking at different versions of, of poems um, in revision. So for instance, looking at a Sylvia Plath poem and looking at the different versions and the slight changes in, in words. Um, so I am going to read a piece that I brought in and got feedback on in, in the course. Um, let's see, and I'm actually going to put in the chat, just coming from disability culture, I often people experience poems in different ways. So, you know, there's listening, but also for some people, visual uh, might be supportive. So I just dropped in a, a link that will take you to the uh, visual vi version of, of this piece, um, an access copy. And so the piece I'm reading, Pivot for Dawn, was um, partly inspired by I recently started taking cello lessons again after a long hiatus and with an older cello that needed some work. So that put me in contact with both luthiers and the need for a new sound post. Um, so in the thread about grief, this, this poem is actually relating uh, to ecological grief. Pivot for Dawn. Earth requires a new sound post. Old one knocked loose. Regular gravity tilts a whirl exacerbated by climate catastrophe. Luthiers work long hours to fashion this pivot. Longer to get it just right. Breath, a measure of ocean wave, width of tree ring, delicate horsehair of a bow. They tie their black smocks, attend the ground's changing pulses, skilled in the overture of making things sing. Shrug off humankind's expectations. No fix for this green-blue marble. They work with the instrument underneath them. Its flukes and fissures, extracted outsourced materials, hauntings of extinct flora and fauna. Position the post through vents in the crust where earth gasps. Align it so all the living things, and even the recently dead, exhale in tandem. Damaged layers vibrate into creation. Oceans pull back, recalibrate tides, release heals a rift. Luthiers tuck away tools, hold aprons. From the core, a note bellows imperfectly out. Matter attempts a hum. Thank you. Thanks so much. That line about exhaling in tandem was really resonant. It felt almost like you um you were ubiquitous in that poem you could just see the whole world a really beautiful view of it um thank you for that and our next reader is donna how do i say your last name donna oh i think you're still muted Hello. Hello. Welcome. <laughs> Thanks, everybody. Um, it's Patrolis. Patrolis. Thank you. Yes. Sure. Um, I took Craig Teicher's, is it Teicher or Tyker? Tych His um, class, it was Poem as a Diary. And it was a week long course. And it was after a long hiatus I'd been writing, but I hadn't done a workshop in many years. Um, so this poem, let me put my glasses back on, is Thursday, so not very exciting <laughs> title. Okay, Thursday. Walk with me today by the river. It's March, rabbit, rabbit. It's cold like a slap, and the wind doesn't kiss, but stings. 
departs for some place unknown. One ticket, please. Going, going, gone. Barely holding the door for spring. She in the wings, arms heavy with an arsenal of buds, green warmth, chirping, wide open, hungry again. It's something to feel at least. Gratitude for the patterns in the currents, crashing, blending, carried, like us, across an expanse too rich to cover alone. I wiped the chocolate ice cream from the corner of your mouth. You didn't know it was there. I heard your voice before I knew you. The sound wave pulled me in, like quicksand, jungle danger, all of that. Thank you. I actually quite like Thursday as a title. <laughs> you do? I, I do. I do. Um, and I, I love the idea of warmth having a color, that sort of synesthesia that came into the poem. It's really lovely. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. And let's see. Our next reader is Eric Garski. Hi, can okay. you hear me all right? All right. Um, yeah. I, I think I took Melissa's class um, um, maybe a couple years ago and it was uh, very useful to help me get kickstart, kickstarted me into to writing again. Um, been writing for a long time, but I'm, uh, uh, I, I now have more time since I'm retired and um, have been uh, uh, put together a, a an Instagram account, so it's, um, I'll put it in the chat, it's at Eric Poetry. Um, uh, this poem is called uh, Anxiety and Reason. And, uh, oh, the other thing is that, uh, that I really liked about uh, the workshop that has helped me a lot, out a lot is um, uh, one of the tips that uh, Melissa provided was to, uh, put together a document for your um, uh, orphan words or, or lines that don't quite fit into, um, <clears throat> into a poem right away. So every time I, I think of a, a line that doesn't fit into something, it, it goes into that document. So thank you, Melissa, I appreciate that. Hmm. So this is called Anxiety and Reason. Anxiety has been sober for the better part of two weeks with the help of reason. This is going quite well until anxiety invites reason out for a drink. Anxiety asks reason to drink from his pint. Anxiety shares his fears and doubts and innermost anxiety with reason. And reason tries to reason with anxiety until reason just can't reason it anymore. The ale is strong and anxiety says, let's call our soon to be XY. Seems like a great idea. But you can reason with her. And reason in a lapse of good judgment agrees. Anxiety picks up the phone and it rings and rings and rings. She doesn't answer. She knows whose anxiety is on the phone. She'll only text back. She thinks he should. She thinks that he should have listened to the voice of reason. Thank you. Thank you. That was delightful. I like the idea of anxiety and reason having a drink together and one of them only texting back <laughs> the phone calls. We all know what that means. <laughs> well, yeah. not all. Not always, yeah. but it's very <laughs> fun. <laughs> yeah, somebody yeah. put that they love the Thanks. personification of emotions. Yes, totally. Uh, that was yeah. Stephanie. Thank you, Stephanie. So I we have time for another round, and I know that some guests have asked to read as well. So we'll do one more round of um, people who have taken workshops recently. And then if there's time after that, we'll have some guest readers as well. So... Cynthia, would you like to read again? 
she there. Yes. This is great because it one poem was hard to choose. So <laughs> oh, I'm glad you get another one. Um, and I should say that my book um, in the Museum of Hunting and Nature came out last year. So fantastic. Just... Feel free to put that in the, the chat later too. Okay, I will. Um, and this one. Thank you. This one's called Sky Burial. So close to sleep, I might be still dreaming. In a soft blur of thoughts, I think of the skate park from above, smears of color where the children were etched into the air. The sky up here where I sit in my dream site fills me with the sensation of the color blue. As a child, my favorite book was the Rainbow Goblins. Blue was an angry goblin. He sucked all of the color out of the sky. A colorless sky remained. When my mother died, she did not have much. Three heavy white banker's boxes arrived on my doorstep. I wanted to roll out a field of sun print paper and on it place each object, each thrift store trinket, what remained. I wanted to watch the sun burn in a memory of them, bury them in light. Wow, buried in light. <laughs> I, and I can see so much resonance between this and the other poem that you read with all the color and the attention to art. Um, look forward to picking up your book. Thank so, you. Yeah. Uh, so our next reader is Carol Despo Fawcett. I would love to read again. Okay. And this is a spatial poem I just put it in the chat as well if anyone wants to look at it um and then let me find it here on my computer Hold on. Mm. okay this is a poem I wrote in Melissa's class recently um and it's about one of my favorite places on earth is where my family and I my two grandsons go a couple times in the summer and fall for camping and there's hot springs it's up in the Olympic mountains Dear visitor at Soldag, walk along the river's edge, pick a flat rock, rub its sun-warmed smoothness between thumb and forefinger, cock your wrist just so, let it fly across water, see it skip, one, two, three, listen to its song, a raven's caw, drumbeats calling, quillette ancestors dancing, singing, click of tongues, honoring spirit quest, potlatches, the dead, swaying in red cedar canoes, high in trees, silver waters of salmon flowing, watch the rock sink, feel the mu music climb inside you, a new song rising. Thank, Thank you. you. I'm so glad you chose that one because the two poems that you read really show your range so well. And even the range of diff the different kinds of tones that you can accomplish in a poem. It's very, very interesting. And people are commenting in the chat on the shape. It's, it's the poem, if I remember correctly, skips across the page as well as the stones. So really lovely. Uh, Marianne. Would you like to read again? I would. So I have uh, I have another piece from that sixth poem movement um, that's actually earlier in the sequence. Um, so I'm sitting here thinking, well, if I knew I was going to do two, I wanted to do two different. But this one is called um, An Irish Prayer for Autumn. In fall, the rose rose... Bleh. Take two. <laughs> in fall, the road rose up to meet me. It met me not where I was going or where it seemed I should be met. It rose to meet me where I am. You gone, but everywhere and always. Me struggling to send out shoots. Ever in search of the greening, that moment of rebirth, restart. But that's not this season. More the turning of earth rather than the fresh sowing. But the, rose ro the road rose up to meet me here, where I am in this moment. I will stay and dig in the taproot. Thank you. Didn't know how hard the whole road and rose thing was going to be to read out loud. So you created appreciate your indulgence. 
<laughs> yeah, you created a tongue twister for yourself. I uh, did. I I, I'm really happy to hear another part of that poem. And uh, I just, I still keep thinking about the, the poem and six movements. It's, uh, I just love the idea of that. And um, I'd like to see a little bit more of its unfolding and hear a little more of it. So thank you. Thank you. So Genevieve, would you like to read again? Great. Sure, I'll read. Um... I've been searching for how to blur my background, but I can't find it. So you still get the blankets. Um, <laughs> you love the blankets. <laughs> yeah. Um, very cozy. Um, I want to just um, out of, uh, out of, in the spirit of decolonization, acknowledge the land I'm on, um, which was, and is still inhabited by the Tongva, Tata, Viam, Serrano, Kij, and Chumash peoples here in Los Angeles. Um, I'm sorry, I forgot to do that earlier. And um, in the spirit of range, I'll read, um, rather than another love poem, my default, I'll read a, um, not necessarily, a health poem, a medical poem. Uh, but which one? I'll read um, the scarier one. How about? <laughs> uh, and this is called January 10th, 2024. Um, subtitle End Wire. My surgeon, the world expert, wrinkles her nose at my IV. I miss when they wheel me ragdoll into what must have been the cooler of the operating room, when they clamp my skull face down in the cradle for a massage with scalpels so I can't so much as shiver. Would I were a stag's head on a lodge wall, surveyor of my verdant demen, admired across the generations, watchful over their mess halls and feasts, a ten-point dark-eyed totem who traded movement for witness at a loss that gets to know. With her doll hands, she cuts out the strand of connective tissue at the base of my spinal cord, pulling me too taut since birth. Now, I am forty. Whose life have I changed lately? In chemistry lab, I held my breath against the vapors kiting up the hood and the shelves of great books I imagined going up with them, a scrim of spines eminescing the eternal mystery. My surgeon checks her work twice. Henceforth, I bear her mark. Later, she appears at my bedside, unannounced. She is pleased for us. I distraught. They put me out so early. I wanted to see you in the operating room. I wanted to say, Danke schön. And she blushes like a girl I've handed a rose. Mm -hmm. Then she's gone. Her part done. My part ongoing. I've had a brush with greatness, I tell you, weeping. No, you say. You've had a brush with death. Wow, that ending, a brush yeah. with greatness, a brush with death, amazing, very, mm. very amazing. And I was really also so taken with the way you portrayed the surgeon with doll's hands and girlishness. And uh, mm. that was just really, really interesting. Thank you. Um, somebody wrote in the chat also that you being in your closet surrounded by the blankets is very intimate, which I also found interesting because we were commenting earlier about how your reading style is intimate and your poems are intimate. So thank you for bringing your intimacy. <laughs> Come my... into my world. <laughs> right, right, exactly. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Um, so Moira, oh, did we determine no Moira is still not here okay well, I thought I'd give it another try why not and Stephanie would you like to read again 
Thank you. Yes, I'd I'd love to. And Genevieve, that that line about she checked her work twice just really uh, was impactful. Um, yeah, and I realized I didn't mention um, my latest book, and I just have a postcard with me here, but um, is Psych Murders, which is about my lived experience with uh, shock treatments and as a psychiatric system survivor. So following mm -hmm. along the line of engagement with the um, with the medical world and and disability. And it's a book of, I, I call them hybrid memoir poems. Mm -hmm. so I will just drop in the chat if people are interested, just my website where you can find out um, more info. and. And yes, I'm usually on Anishinaabe land in uh, what's colonially called Ypsilanti, Michigan, but I actually just got yesterday to um, France for an artist residency. So it's uh, I'm quite jet lagged and it's quite late here, but um, part of what I'm working on while I'm here is a new series of poems called Ghost Sister. So I'm gonna read a piece that, uh, I didn't expect to read a second piece, but I'm gonna read something that I haven't read that's part of the series that's working, um, looking at a relationship between an alive sister and a dead sister. Um, and the access copy that I have above, I actually dropped uh, this poem in as well for anyone who wants to visually follow along. Okay. Instructions for listening to dead sister. Assume communication. Treat death as another state of being with its own frequency, tonal tides. Mm -hmm. Tune into antenna hairs inside your ears and nose, back of neck, lower arms that radio information from the other side. Bypass the brain's rationale for sudden cold warmth, swish of curtains, unexplained reflections. Speak your name incantation to breath, to syllables alive in saliva. Remember the silence at dinner, period between sentences, the story of her stillbirth your mother doesn't tell, a foot in the crack where light exits, sensitivity to shadows and their mistranslations. Swim in the waters where she swam, double boiler of womb and sweet water. Look for her translucence, a hint of form, knuckle, soft baby femur, a summary of parts. Glimpse her between the silver flare distraction of a perch school, ghosts of sturgeon, ancient lake monsters whose presence and absence glides her deep haunts. Trust the vibrations, the extremes of sun, fluid portals, air pops, alarms, her want a beat in your Venus flow. Pause when she asks to trade places. Hum to her a desperate cradle and all lullaby. Switch to a funeral dirge. Sing her back to the grave. Wow. Thanks so much. That was great. That was so powerful. So good. <laughs> you know, even though people wow. people were muted, I felt like I could hear them doing that. Oh, you know, that sound. <laughs> oh, God, poems are so powerful or moving. So thank you for sharing that. And uh, mm -hmm. yeah, I want to keep encouraging people to put their book titles and publications and, and those things in the chat so you all can find each other's work because I know after hearing it tonight, we're going to be seeking you out and wanting to read more. So, um, Eric, would you like to read again? Or is he still here? I can't tell if he's still here. I don't think he is. Oh, there I he am. is. Okay, there oh, you are. You, okay. you moved okay. off to my corner. <laughs> okay. Let's see, so this one, uh, let's see, where... This one, it's 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 short and it's uh, it's inspired by old um, poetry prompts, and it's um, one of three that I've I've done. It's uh, based on a prompt. Uh, it's called "Write a Poem." Uh, write a poem. 
cut out all of the individual words from an overdue library book, add half a cup of cream, hooray. Add grief, passion, enlightenment to taste. Let marinade during your childhood sear in a cast cast iron pan during a painful flashback serve immediately. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, another really powerful piece. I can see how your your two pieces connect to each other so well. And I'm also starting to really feel the resonance among the poems that you all are reading tonight. It's interesting how that flow happens and people read after each other something that's similar or that speaks to something someone said in a previous poem. Um, it's just, it's kind of amazing. It's like the flow of the universe happening like <laughs> in a microcosm right here. Mm -hmm. um, so now I think we can open it up. If anybody would like to read who has not read already, please throw your name in the chat there and I will um, call you, call on you. No, I won't call. I'll text. <laughs> I'm just kidding. <laughs> okay, Mona. Yes, wonderful. We'd love to hear you read. Hi, thank you. <clears throat> I have a, a book out. Um, you can get this on Amazon. And if it's okay, I will put the link in the chat as well as my website in the chat when I'm finished. Um, this book is um, all poetry inspired by tarot and um, oracle cards. Um, I just randomly opened it to a page, and I really I write sometimes using uh, different forms, and this form is called a viator form. It has a, a line that repeats in every stanza and it goes down a line in every stanza. So it's called Left Hand of Fortune. Nomad ancestors danced my life. Their flames spit yellow and orange. Skirts swayed with sounds of violins, hand carved in rosewood, rich with soul. Tambourine sang along in time. Itchy left hand, money to come. Move on to ships, speed silently. Nomad ancestors danced my life. Silver giants crossed darkened space, collecting precious passengers. Horses extinct for centuries, protection from becoming food. Rhin rhinos with their horns of silver, hippos torn from watery homes. Nomad ancestors danced my life. New generations wandering, other worlds, their nomads long dead, scratching our palms, we hear their call. Hippos' broad noses smell water, laced greens and mud, cross galaxies. They tell us where they want to go. Nomad ancestors danced my life. Saving them is our life's journey. Our nomad hippos quell the itch. Left hand of fortune leads us on. Horns of rhinos glow their magic, seeking new home in need of light. They feel the itch choose where to go. Nomad ancestors danced my life. In rear view, planet is a glow. Gentle horses extend their wings, listen closely for calls of help. They fly one by one through bay doors, rescue horses to worlds unknown. Alone on ships, we scratch our palms. Nomad ancestors danced my life. Thank you. Thank you. I really love how you captured both sort of the idea of the, the card as a, a flat image that we're looking at, but also all the movement and world and everything that goes around it and that is part of it and that it predicts. And um, yeah, somebody said the menagerie effect. Yes, totally. Uh, Genevieve said that. So um, is there anyone else here who would like to jump in and read? If not, we'll start wrapping things up. No other, don't be shy. If you have something you wanna share, we wanna hear it. Okay, so 
Okay, okay. So we've got another link to a book. Wonderful. So uh, yeah, I just wanted to say again, thank you all for being here. It was really such a, a pleasure and an honor to hear your words and to facilitate the sharing tonight. And um, I really hope to see all of you in future workshops. And I'm sure you all hope to see each other in future workshops. And um, I wanna thank Jennifer and Stephanie once again, and I will turn it over to Jennifer to say some words about upcoming events and other uh, Fine Arts Work Center uh, goings on. <laughs> Thank you so much, Melissa. Um, we hope to have Melissa back. That's one announcement that I definitely want to make. We want to have her back. Yeah. So if you haven't taken her class, um, keep an eye out on upcoming catalogs. We hope to see her in those catalogs. Um, so yeah, I want to say a little something before you all take off about some upcoming offerings. You might've seen our newsletters. We have new programming this spring called Books That Matter. And what it is, is um, for book lovers like yourself, there'll be some poetry books discussed, uh, nonfiction books, fiction books. Um, they're uh, presentations, about an hour long presentation uh, by four different beloved Falk faculty. We have Alexander Chi, Victoria Riddell, Nick Flynn, and Eileen Miles. And they're going to talk about the books that they love the most in the world, which is always great when someone's talking about something that's coming directly from the heart. You know, you know that they're going to uh, get into all the little nooks and crannies of a book, things that you would have never suspected. So take a look at that. Um, that's information about that will appear in upcoming newsletters and you'll be able to sign up for those presentations. And then soon after that, we'll have our 24 Pearl Street summer program. Um, and about mid-May is when we're hoping to launch our catalog for that. Um, I don't actually have, usually what I like to do in these, in these uh, readings is give you some teasers, but I don't actually have teasers for that for the summer. So I'm sorry about that, but I just have it for the spring offering. And I hope you can I'll check that out. If you have any questions whatsoever, feel free to email me, jjean at fawc.org. And I can ask, I, I mean, I can ask, I can answer all your 24 Pearl Street and uh, Falk questions. Um, if you have suggestions for faculty or anything at all, definitely reach out to me for those things too. So other than that, I think we're all done and we're gonna wrap up. Look for the email that has this video and uh, feel free to share it with, with uh, your networks um, because you know all the poems were amazing. You should definitely be proud of what you've written. Especially if you just, if you all just kind of wrote that stuff, that's really amazing. <laughs> that just happened recently. That's, that's blowing my mind because that often happens um, for readers. So yeah, otherwise, Thank you. Take care and have a great night, everyone. Bye. Thank you, everybody. Thank you. Good night. Good night. Thank you for letting me read. No problem. Thank, thank you. Thank you, Melissa. Oh, thank you. Thanks, Bye. Melissa. Bye. Bye.